Hey guys, Mike here from Movie Nation. In today's video, we'll be going through the 2017 sci-fi romance film, Orbiter 9. It's time to recall, let's get started, turn on subtitles, and spoilers ahead. The film opens in what looks like an empty spaceship. Suddenly, a door opens and a woman walks in. The woman is then shown working out. In a later scene, she is shown sitting on a chair as the computer warns that the oxygen levels are now 1%. Later, the computer tells her that a spaceship is going to come in 17 hours and that she will be able to breathe better soon and that she is about to meet the first human. The computer tells her not to be angry, but she just replies by saying, I know. Helena is then shown watching a recording of her parents who tell her that they are going to commit suicide in order for her to live due to an oxygen shortage. Her mother tells her that she wishes she could have kissed or hugged her one more time, and they then tell her to hang on until an engineer arrives. During this time, Rebecca, the orbiter's computer, looked after her. Helena then tries to go to sleep and is woken by the computer system, which tells her to conduct a medical test to see her fitness. It also tells her that some of her injuries are still repairing, so she should take it easy for the next few days. Helena then goes back to watch more videos of her parents. Later, she is shown working out again. Shortly after the workout, warnings start blaring in the ship as the computer tells her that coupling has been initiated, and suddenly everything goes back to normal as the computer tells her that the maneuver was successful. The spaceship that Helena was told about earlier has finally arrived and has docked with hers. She goes to the airlock, and in steps a man in a spacesuit. He tells her that he is an engineer who is there to fix the ship and find the issue as to why the oxygen levels suddenly decline. Helena introduces herself and Alex starts fixing the ship. During repairs, Helena tells him more about herself and offers him help. He has also brought a small robot with him to make the process go along faster. As Alex works, Helena goes to what looks like a nursery and starts to pick some vegetables. When Alex is done with the repairs, Helena offers him to come have dinner with her and Alex agrees. During dinner, Helena then tells him about why her parents died and Alex tells her that she is lucky. Helena also asks him if he was ever interested in seeing Celeste, but he just replies that he did not have the same strength as the colonists. The next day, Helena wakes to the sound of the computer telling her that the oxygen reserves have been deactivated as it seems the repairs were successful. Helena rushes to the control room and sees Alex working. She tells him that she is breathing better, and he tells her that things will be even better by tomorrow. Helena once again goes to work out, and after that, goes to see him in his sleeping quarters, only to find the small robot there. She tells it that she could never understand what it says. Meanwhile, Alex continues to work on the ship, and later goes to tell Helena that he won't be able to have dinner today as he is tired. He tells her goodnight and goes to his room to sleep. Helena undergoes more medical tests as the computer tells her that everything seems to be well. She then goes to Alex's quarters and sees that he is fast asleep. She gets on top of him and stares at him as he asks her what she's doing. She tells him that she's never kissed anyone and that she's going to spend the next 20 years on that ship, so she wants him to make love to her, claiming that it may be her only chance in life. Alex agrees and the two kiss, which turns into sex. Later, as Helena lies next to him, Alex gets up and takes all his things, makes some final repairs, and then takes an elevator back to his spacecraft. As he's about to leave, Helena wakes up and asks him why he is leaving without saying goodnight. He says that he didn't want to wake her and that he is sorry for what happened last night. As the door of the elevator closes, Helena says that she isn't sorry. Helena looks through the computer and sees him wearing his helmet. As he leaves the ship, he emerges into a corridor full of pipes and lights. As he goes out, he emerges on Earth in a guarded facility in the middle of a wooded area. Alex continues to walk through the woods until he comes to a jeep. He puts all his equipment in the truck and then gets in to drive. He drives to the main building and reports to Hugo, the head of one of four secret international sites secretly experimenting on humans in the hopes of one day launching a mission to Celeste, a habitable planet orbiting Alpha Centauri. The Earth's oceans have been poisoned, and the planet is no longer suitable to host future generations. Catherine, the global program director, is Hugo's boss. Hugo tells him that within 20 to 30 years, they might be able to launch the first ships. Hugo also remarks that Alex should have been more excited, but he doesn't seem to be. Alex then tells him that he's concerned about the people being experimented on, but Hugo cuts him off and tells him that he should not be concerned about the 10 people, rather he should focus on the 8 billion humans. He also tells him that he should go home and rest, and hopefully after completing his next assignment, he will be able to look at things differently. Alex returns home and makes himself a meal, and then silently sits on a chair. The next morning, he wakes up and goes back to work. There, his co-worker tells him that he should come and hang out with them as they miss him. The man also tells him that the medical reports for Alex came back and that he is fine, and he also invites him to come over for dinner. Alex says that he can't come tonight and that he will turn on the TV. He returns home, and as he eats, he hears a news report on the TV talking about a catastrophe that happened on a ship that Alex worked on. 
It seems that this was the reason for Alex being so despondent. While he sits at home, he sees a video of Helena, who says that Alex fixed the problem and that she wishes it could have taken more time for him to fix the issue. The next day, Alex goes to work on another shuttle titled 10, and on his drive back he stops by a sign that says the number 9, but he decides against it and leaves. Alex then goes to see Sylvia, a therapist who he has been visiting on a regular basis. The therapist tells him that they have seen each other a total of 197 times. Alex then asks the therapist if they can be straight with each other. He then tells her that there are people inside the simulator. She says she already knows that, but Alex says she doesn't. He then tells her that they put babies on the simulators. The babies have now grown into adults, and they are being used as human guinea pigs. Sylvia asks him whether he knew this all along, and he says he did. He continues to look at Helena through the monitoring system, and then goes to meet Sylvia and tells her that he loves her. The next day, he goes to Helena in his typical Earth attire and enters the facility. Inside the simulator, Helena is shocked and asks the computer what this is. This scares Helena, but she goes towards the airlock to see Alex. He goes to her and tells her the truth about her circumstances. He tells her that she is not on a ship and is rather on Earth. He tells her that they have to leave. This scares Helena and she backs off. But Alex pulls out a camera and tells her that it has been recording since she was a baby. Helena still can't believe him, so he shows her the tracker placed inside her to monitor her vitals. Alex then tells her that he is going to send fake signals through the tracker and then takes her with him out of the simulator. Helena is scared and asks about Rebecca, but Alex tells her that she is just a navigation robot who doesn't communicate with the outside. They then walk through the same corridor, and when Helena steps into the sunlight, she is disoriented by the sun and the sights that she beholds. Alex gently grabs her hand and continues to guide her towards the car. Helena's vision is still blurry, and she even struggles to walk, but they manage to get out of the woods. Alex puts Helena in the trunk of his jeep and asks her not to make a noise. The guards then check the jeep, and it seems that they are going to catch Helena, but they think that the radiation was just coming from the suit, so they let him go. That night, he takes Helena to a mountainside and tells her about the entire project. Helena says that she wants to see her parents, but Alex tells her that no one should know she has escaped, especially her parents, who have dedicated their entire lives to the project and would turn her over. Alex then takes her to his apartment, where Helena is taken aback by everything she sees. Alex introduces her to the outside world and lets her out into the rain. The two even kiss. The next day, Helena looks around the flat while Alex is away. She seems fascinated by his drawing and the chessboard in his room. Meanwhile, Alex tells Sylvia that he has managed to take Helena out, and she asks him if the military finds out what they have done. Alex says that they won't. As he is leaving the building, Sylvia comes out in person and tells him about a house that he can use to escape to protect Helena. Later, Alex asks Helena if she wants to go somewhere. She asks him to take him to his favorite place, and he takes him to his lab, and then takes her to see the aquarium, as she wants to watch the ocean. Helena is awed by everything she sees, and the two go out to eat. The next day, Helena tries to get into a room that is locked, and Alex opens it for her. It shows that there are ten simulators, and all of them are being controlled by Hugo. Alex then takes her to a pub to meet with his acquaintances, including a doctor named Xiao. They come up with a story to explain how they met, and it seems that Alex's friend believes it. Helena seems to fit into the group easily as she is able to communicate with the people easily, but it seems that Alex's friend isn't warm to the idea of going to Celeste, but they agree that it is necessary. Later, Alex brings Helena to Xiao after she develops a rash on her shoulder. Xiao is dubious of her skin since it looks like it has never been exposed to sunlight, but he promises to contact them with the findings of his test. She tracks down her parents, who are married program scientists who are unconnected to her after finding the address in the orbital dossiers. The ten participants, they say, are clones of people who have been dead for two generations and were all duped in the same way. Helena is handcuffed to a railing by the father so she can contact Hugo, but the mother knocks him out and lets her escape. Helena returns to Alex, enraged, but he apologizes, and she forgives him. Alex asks Sylvia for assistance, and she offers to conceal them in an apartment she owns in a slum. Hugo, the Manhunt's leader, investigates Alex's residence and discovers Sylvia's contact information. Hugo and his violent guards approach as Alex and Helena pick up the key from Sylvia. Hugo, believing the pair is hiding there, they shoot Sylvia in the head, forcing Helena to scream. The two ascend to the roofs to flee. Helena injures her leg and subsequently demands that Alex demonstrate how to leap across a rooftop, but she refuses and is apprehended. Alex manages to flee. Helena is no good for further study and is a live burden to the corporation, so Catherine effectively orders Hugo to terminate her. Alex receives a call from Xiao, who gives him an update on Helena's health. In an attempt to contact Hugo, Alex runs to the control center and is shot and detained. Hugo learns from Alex that Helena is six weeks pregnant, which he learns through Xiao. 
Hugo and Catherine believe that seeing an actual birth and subsequent formation of a family group within Orbiter 9 will provide vital insights into the project. If Helena and Alex are to return to Orbiter 9, she has one condition, that Hugo must allow their kid to leave Earth when the project is launched. Years later, a young lady emerges from Orbiter 9 in the forest where she is met by a contented but elderly Hugo. As the first spacecraft depart for Celeste, she raises her eyes to the sky. As she grins, an unidentified stranger walks out from behind her. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.